Hey everyone, Michael O'Brien here. In today's video, we're gonna talk some more about pocket management at your walk around gigs. Hello my friends and welcome back to another Advice for Magicians video where my job is to make you the best possible entertainers that you can be. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to best manage your pocket space as well as my routine on how I approach performing in walk around situations. Some people do things differently. I'm gonna to talk to you guys about how I like to do it and then give you some more advice on how I've seen other magicians do it as well so that you guys can pick and choose which version you like the best. Remember, you don't have to do this exactly the way that I am telling you to do it. There is no right or wrong way when it comes to going out performing magic for people. It's whatever works best for you. All I can do is sit here and talk at you guys through this computer screen, right? And hopefully you guys find anything that I have to say useful. Some of you have found some of the things that I've said useful. And so what you've done is you've clicked the subscribe button and rang the notification bell. That way you guys will know when I upload more useful tidbits of information. And some of you have enjoyed my channel so much that you wanted to support me by clicking the join button. And you can do so by joining for $1 a month, $5 a month, or $99 a month. My $1 a month subscribers, the mob support, will get early access to all videos. If you would also like access to the tutorials playlist, join the mob squad for $5 a month. And if you would like one-on-one -on -one access to me directly where you can ask me any questions that you want. We can have a live phone consultation or I can do a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with you so that we can learn new techniques or I could teach you some new magic, work on tricks that you're already practicing or if you wanna take your professional career to the next level, we can talk about that as well. Anything that you want, that is the mob boss level and you can access that in the $99 a month tier. Let's go ahead and introduce now some of our newest members. Ladies and gentlemen, please say hello to Lee N, Randy DeMarco, North Star Hyperbaric, Carlini Jeremio, and 128. These guys have all become members because they believe in me, they believe in my channel, and what it is that I do here. And I can't thank you guys enough. It is because of you I am able to keep this channel going. So without further ado, let's dive into the topic of this video, pocket management. A lot of magicians, they wanna know how do I manage my pockets? Where do I put all of my tricks? Everyone approaches this differently. Some magicians like to load up their pockets full of stuff. So they'll have like three trick decks over here and three trick decks over here and their, their paddles and their rings and sponge balls in this pocket. and their coins and their Omni deck and all this other stuff in this pocket, right? How is it exactly that I like to approach this? For me personally, I like to go with the less is more approach when it comes to walk arounds. Because keep in mind, even though I'm gonna be there for one or two or even three hours, I'm not performing three hours worth of magic. I'm only performing about seven or eight minutes worth of magic over and over again for multiple groups of people. With this in mind, I come with a very minimalist approach to how I set up my pockets. And my setup usually goes something like this. In one pocket, I have a deck of cards, easy peasy. In another pocket, I have my purse frame and my sponge balls. In another pocket, I have my Chinese linking ring set, in this case, Ninja Plus by Matthew Garrett. In another pocket, I have a purse, a real purse, full of coins. And in another pocket, I have some kind of bonus special pack of cards or some other trick, whether it be my strolling chop cup or uh, a pack of Pokemon cards or Yu-Gi-Oh cards or some special gaff deck, like an invisible deck or Omni deck, something like this. And that is it. <clears throat> I usually come prepared with five or six pieces of magic to perform, and I do those same five or six pieces of magic all night. Now, remember earlier I said you only perform for five or seven, you know, between five and seven minutes, maybe eight if you're pushing it a little bit. If you need to let it breathe a little bit more, like maybe there's only like 50 people there and you're there for an hour and you need it to breathe a little bit more, you need to stretch out the performance. 
I would say the maximum that I would perform for is 10 minutes worth of material. And the way that I do it is I break it up into two parts. I have my A material and my B material. My A material is what I'm gonna perform at every single group. So in this case, it's my sponge ball opener with the purse frame, some card magic with a regular deck of cards, and Ninja Plus by Matthew Garrett. I perform that for every single group. Now you might be asking, yeah, but you brought other stuff too. Like you have that deck of Pokemon cards and that, you know, that hot rod or that coin purse or whatever else you have on you. What about that stuff? The reason I carry those now is if I need to do additional magic performances for repeat guests, guests that have already seen some of my magic, sometimes I, you know, I run out of time. It's a, or let me say I run out of people, right? I still have time left over at the end of my set. Let's just say that they hired me for two hours and I've already been there an hour and a half and I've performed for everybody. Well, maybe I might say, hey, you guys were a great group. Would you like to see a little bit more magic? And now I'm gonna perform my B set for them. Or sometimes what ends up happening is as I'm performing, a guest will grab some of their friends and pull them over and they'll say, dude, you guys have to see this magician. He is so cool. The stuff that he does is insane. Like here, guys, check this out, right? So now you're gonna perform for these guests. And although these guests haven't seen your material yet, that one guest already has. So in order to not ruin it for that one person, you don't wanna perform the exact same tricks again. You wanna do some other magic. So in this case, what I do is I perform my B set for them. And I even have a couple of little zingers, little curveballs that I throw specifically for that one spectator, right? So for example, for me, my A set, like I said, I, I do my sponge ball opener with my purse frame. What I do is I say, I have a question for all of you. Have you seen my purse? And I reach in and I pull out the invisible purse, open it up, I start pulling sponge balls out of it and I go into my sponge ball routine, right? Now, let's just say this guy's already seen this. I'll say something like this. I have a question for you. Have you seen my purse? I reach in and I pull out the invisible purse frame and this guy goes, ah, yeah, I've seen that already. And I go, I'm sorry, not this purse, my other purse. And I pull the real coin purse out from the invisible purse that I have here. And now this is something new for him. He hasn't seen this yet. So I say, would you do me a favor, my friend, take that coin purse, remove whatever you find inside and spread it around so that everyone can see. And so now they're gonna take the coins out they're gonna examine the coins and maybe I'm gonna do a coins across or three fly or whatever I have prepared for that particular piece of magic that I'm gonna perform now. And this again is so that I can perform magic for new guests as well as guests that have already seen it without ruining it, but still being able to perform some new magic for them. It is not necessary to jam your pockets full of three hours worth of material as if you were sitting down in a formal situation performing for three hours straight for the same guests. When you're doing a walk around set, you have that luxury of only performing for a few people at a time. So you can perform a five or seven minute set for you know a group of four or five people and then move on to the next group. And you just keep doing that same set over and over and over again. That is how I approach performing walk around magic. Now, <clears throat> like I said, other people do it different ways. I've seen some magicians set up their pockets so that they are fully loaded and ready to go with three hours worth of material for the three hours that they're gonna be there. And they have each pocket designed to a T where everything goes, right? Some magicians carry a, a little bag that they wear on their belt or some magicians even have suspenders with different bags on them that they can you know, hide things in. I've even seen some magicians show up to walking gigs with the close-up table. You didn't mishear me. I did not misspeak. I said with a close-up table, right? They rock up with a table on wheels and they move that table around from table to table. They have their little cubbies all stacked behind the table with their savant so they can ditch into it and all of that stuff, right? And they wheel their little close-up table from group to group. Or they roam over to this side of the table, they do a pitch, they get like 10 people, they do a little mini show for them, and then they wheel their table over to this side of the room, they do a little pitch, they get like 10 people, they do a mini performance for them, etc. Some magicians, if you have this luxury of having like a green room or some kind of storage space at the venue that you're performing, 
will have their A set and their B set on them. They'll perform for the first half of their walk around. Then they'll take a quick five minute break to reset in the break area or the, the green room, wherever they have their stuff. And now they'll put their C and D material on them and they'll go out and they'll stroll their C and D material now. So it really is up to you how you guys want to do it. But what I can say is whatever is gonna make for the most stress-free and easiest setup for you is what you should do. And I honestly believe the way that I do it provides that. So let me know in the comment section below what you guys think. How do you approach your walk arounds when it comes to pocket management? I'd love to hear it, and I'm sure everyone else watching and listening at home would love to see your guys' ideas as well, because maybe there's things that I haven't even thought of uh, that you guys might be able to shed a little bit of light on. Anyway, my name is Michael O'Brien. Again, thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you want to support me further, click the join button, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.